Attention! McCarthy Math Academy proudly presents the Math FSA Boot Camp Series. Hello everyone, I'm Miss McCarthy and I am so excited that you are here. are more than a test score. We don't want you stressing out about this test. We just want you to activate your greatness within. And you might be saying, But Miss McCarthy, listen, I know that math is your jam, but math and I, yeah, we're not really the best of friends. You may have struggled in the past, and you know what? Good. Struggle is necessary because struggle makes us stronger. If we go over something in these videos that you're like, hmm, that skill didn't quite click yet, I'm gonna send you to more videos to help you practice. Your teachers and I, we can expose you to all kinds of tools and strategies, but you have to choose to use them. You have to choose to own them. Imagine opening up that test and feeling so excited to throw down your best. This can be your reality. So now is the time that you need to activate the person you were born to be and let's do this! Are you ready to throw 100% focus, hustle, and heart into this right now? Yeah! That's what I'm talking about, yes! Okay, let's go ahead and jump on into today's episode of the Math FSA Bootcamp Series. And <laughs> I just forgot to say, uh, let me teach ya! What is happening, fifth grade? Welcome to video number one of McCarthy Math FSA Boot Camp Series. I'm so excited to throw some problems at you and have you guys practice so that you can feel super successful on the Math FSA. Okay, so in the description box below, you'll actually see a link that will take you to where you can print out the page that you'll need for today. Okay, if you've already printed it out, great. What I want you to do is go ahead and pause the video right now and solve the problems on your own, and then you're gonna come back and check how you did it compared to how I did it. If you did not have the printed out page, you can go ahead and click the link to get it before we start the video, or you can just keep watching. It is really, really helpful though to have the worksheet in front of you. So I do highly suggest it, but if not, just keep going, follow along with us, okay? So if you have it, go ahead and take this opportunity now to pause the video. All right, welcome back. So we have two questions today. Actually, this is a two-parter. Everybody say two-parter. Make sure that you jot your name up here, that way you know it's yours, and I will go over what this means up here in just a little bit, okay? Um, it says this question has two parts. There's part A, and then in a second we'll get to part B. Part A says that a numerical expression is evaluated as shown oh my gosh with a fancy vocabulary let's tackle that first okay so a numerical expression this means that it has numbers not words but numbers and an expression means that there is no equal sign okay there's no equal sign there so if you're looking here you just see numbers and you see symbols like multiplication addition multiplication subtraction there are just number numbers and symbols which makes this a numerical expression because there's no equal sign if there was an equal sign this would be called an equation equation has an equal sign expression does not have an equal sign just just so you know there okay give that there all right so is evaluated that means it is solved all right, solved as shown down there. So we have a bunch of numbers and symbols and expression that has been solved is what's happening. And I see that we have some parentheses and a whole bunch of different operations. So we're gonna need the order of operations. So I see that we have a bunch of different steps here. Okay, and what our job is is to, in which step does a mistake first occur? First appear, I'm sorry. Okay, the very first, which means that there could be multiple mistakes, but we just want the first one that happens. So here's how I solve these guys. What I do is I actually solve it side by side to figure it out. Okay, now I'm assuming that you have some experience with the order of operations. I use something called PEMDAS. 
parentheses, exponents, multiplication, and division going from left to right, adding and subtracting going from left to right. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, stay tuned to the video. Like, Keep watching with me. Stay tuned to at the end. I'm going to guide you to some videos where I really break this down, okay? But for time's sake with this video, I'm just going to assume that you guys know this, okay? So P stands for parentheses. We're going to solve what's in parentheses first, and I see my parentheses right there. Okay, so we do have a set of parentheses, but we have some different operations occurring within the set of parentheses. So let's go to exponents. Do we have any exponents? We don't for this problem. So let's move to the next step, which would be looking for multiplication and division. Now, multiplication and division are on the same level. It's whatever we see first from left to right. So if I'm looking at parentheses, I see that the very first multiplication sign that I see is right there. And I like to underline the step that I'm going to solve. So we're going to go ahead and solve 4 times 5, which is... 20. Okay, so I'm dropping that 20 down right below where I just underlined 4 times 5. And then I'm going to drop all the other numbers and symbols down. We're still hanging on to these parentheses until we've solved everything, until we've evaluated everything inside. All right, so are there any more multiplication and division going on? There is. There's actually multiplication right here, but because we're working in the parentheses, we're not at this multiplication symbol yet. So we're still in here. Well, so let's move on to the next step, which would be adding and subtracting. Adding and subtracting, they're on the same level, so we're looking for whatever comes first, going from left to right. Again, I break these steps down in my McCarthy Math 155 series that I'll talk to you about at the end, okay? So looking here in the parentheses, going from left to right, I do see addition, I do see subtraction, but the very first one to occur is addition. So let's go ahead and solve that. So 7 plus 20 would be 27. Still going to keep my parentheses because I still have that minus 3. And you might be thinking, but Miss McCarthy, we can go ahead and figure out where the mistake was. You're right. We could. We could totally stop. But I'm kind of like in the I'm in the zone now and I just want to solve this out and then compare my work with the work next to it, okay? So still finishing up the parentheses, we need to subtract. What is 27 minus 3? It is 24. Awesome. So drop that down. And now we have solved, we've evaluated everything within those set of parentheses so we can drop them. Everybody say bye parentheses, they're floating away, they're not needed anymore. All right, so now we have one half times 24. That's a fraction. And I know that when I multiply fractions, I need to fly across and multiply, which means my 24 needs to have a denominator of what? One. And now I can fly across and multiply. If you are like, huh, what are you talking about? I don't know how to multiply fractions. Check out McCarthy Math 155. When I talk about McCarthy Math 155, pay attention because there's plenty of practice on this. Okay, so we have 1 times 24, which would be 24. Very good. 2 times 1 equals 2. And now we have 24 divided by 2. This fraction bar right here, 24 divided by 2 is the same thing, and that would actually be 12, which is not the answer right there. So there was definitely a mistake, right? Let's go back and figure out where that was. So let's see the very first step they did. Well, we did 4 times 5 first, but what does it look like they did in step 1 right here? Yeah, they did 7 plus 4 to get 11. What should they have done first, though? Yeah, they should have multiplied. Do you see how I'm marking up my text? I'm showing all my work here, really thinking through this problem. That's what we're expecting for you, okay? All right, so right there is the very first mistake that happens. They did 7 plus 4 first, and that's not right. They should have done 4 times 5. So in which step does a mistake first appear? Step number 1. Now there are also 
mistakes in step number two, step number three, and step number four, but it says where does it first appear. That's right. Okay, so now this is awesome because it says what is, for part B, what is the correct value? That means the amount. What's the correct amount of the expression? Again, no equal sign there. Well, we solved that, right? We got our answer of 12. And real quick, I need to stop real quick because we forgot you probably didn't forget, I forgot, to jot down the question types, okay? It's really important that you start to understand what kind of questions you're gonna see on the FSA. So this question type right here is a what? What do you think it is? It's a multiple choice question. There can only be one correct answer there. And then here, I see a grid. Does anybody know what kind of question this is if there is a grid right here? It's a gridded response. Jot that down if you did not already. Okay, now for a gridded response style question, your our answer is going to be 12, right? Okay, we've already solved the work, but if we do not lock it in in the gridded response area, then we're gonna get it wrong. So let's ensure that we get it right. There's two ways that you can write down number 12 here. You could either write one, and then a two, or you could go all the way to the right and go two and then one, one and two. Okay, what I want you to do, I'm actually gonna, I'm actually gonna put it right there. And if you're saying, but that's not how my teacher told me to do it, that's fine, that's fine, okay? Your teacher probably has a preference on the way that they want you to do it. Choose whichever way your teacher's telling you to do. Now, if your teacher has not told you to do anything, you might wanna just stick with me, okay? just to get in the habit of it. So one and two. Also, if I only wrote 12 there, I would get this question wrong. A computer is going to scan these bubbles and we need to ensure that we have properly shaded in those bubbles. Do not take forever, do not waste your life away shading in the bubbles, but you do need to make sure that they're nice and dark, okay, and that they're all the way shaded in. So that's how you do this one for video number one. Okay, so I do wanna take a second to point out the other links that you will find in the description box below. The first one is the McCarthy Math 155 series that I was telling you about, okay? Up here, move it down. Um, I wrote down unit three videos 21 through 28, that's eight videos guys okay so McCarthy math 155 takes all the things that you need to know and I make a video on each one and give you tons and tons and tons of practice so if this was kind of tough for you you definitely want to check out McCarthy math 155 even if it wasn't tough for you but you know that you need some extra practice 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 <laughs> check out McCarthy math 155 for real it will help you there is a seven day free trial for that that way you can see if it's something that you want to subscribe to it's something that your teacher could also subscribe to and then give you access to it so I try to make it very affordable for teachers so check that out look at unit 3 21 through 28 that's where you will find the videos that go along with what we did here for the McCarthy math 155 series there's a link in the description box below for that moving on to the next thing we all like free and I have put out some free videos like a while ago like five years ago um, it's called how to pass the math FSA where I take the same thing that we worked on here and there's free videos there to practice as well now just to give you a little bit of a heads up I did create those videos several years ago and things have changed a little bit on the FSA. So what we're doing here is the most recent in 2021, okay? Um, but those were back in like 2015, 2016. So things have changed, just be aware of that. Um, it will give you more practice though. So check out those links if you want some more practice. I've totally got your back and I'm really, really excited to see you in the next video, video number two. All right, bye fifth graders.